Hey there, Kwame here for Square Skills. Just doing another really quick tutorial. Um, there was a request on one of the Squarespace forums from a circle member, RMWB, who wanted to know how to recreate this lovely transition here. So yeah, I'm gonna show. Now, RM, you didn't specify whether you were using layout engine or fluid engine or image blocks. So I am just going to show a couple of different ways that this can be achieved. So here I've got a new page. And if I use my block identifier, you can see that these are image blocks and this is a gallery section here. And um, there's a few different things we can do. So first of all, uh, what we might want to do is just a general image block approach, right? So uh, let's just make some notes in my CSS. Uh, rounded corners on hover. Spell that correctly. So first, we're going to do um, uh, all sorry individual image blocks, and this is going to be for layout engine and fluid engine. So hopefully that makes things easy enough. Um, and this is the simplest approach. We're going to pick our block ID to target it. We want to target the image element and we want to go back and we want to say so for this block on hover that's a colon hover in between so attached to the block id because i want it to be when i hover on the block something happens to the image so just as an example if i put display none i hover on the block the image disappears but what we actually want to do is we want to look at the border rate border dash radius property and I'm going to give it a, let's just go with 500 pixels. That's a nice big number. Yeah, it's working. Now, initially I was actually inclined to say 100%, but as you can see, 100% turns it into a circle or an oval, and that's not quite what we would like. So a general rule of thumb, if you basically just want to round the corners completely, but preserve, I guess, the flat sides, <laughs> um, you can basically just put a massive number. Generally, anything around 500 pixels tends to work. Ooh, I've gone full screen. Um, anyhow, so that's working, but it's not quite how we want it. What we want is for there to be a smooth transition like this. So let's put a transition. And we want to transition the border radius property. We want it to take, let's just say, one second so it's easily visible. So we can leave it at that and it'll do a nice linear transition. Generally, I like to do ease out. It just slows down a bit at the end, and maybe if I make this three seconds, it's a bit more visible. Anyhow, as you can see though, it's it's snapping at the end. You know, when I, when I come off, it's, it's not nice. So the reason for this being is I'm saying only transition like that when it's being hovered. If I just, you know, I'm just gonna copy the whole thing pasted above. If I get rid of this hover and the colon, the whole thing, even without hover, has that border radius. So we'll get rid of the border radius and we'll see it goes back to how it was before. And now because this transition here is just, look, I'm saying for this block, I want the image to transition over three seconds, ease out whenever uh, the border radius changes. Now it works both ways. I can get rid of this down here and it still works both ways because we like our CSS to be nice and dry. And I can swap that down to one second and it's just a little bit nicer and a little bit more fluid. Cool. Not affecting any of these other images. That's great. But what if we did want it to be on all image blocks? Well, we can pretty much duplicate the code and we can say um, all image blocks, layout engine and fluid engine. And instead of targeting the block ID, if we inspect, we can see that there is this class uh, here, SQS block image. That's what we want to target because this will work for both fluid and layout engine. So it's a class, so I use a period, SQS block image. And I want the image within every Squarespace image block to do what we said before. So let's give it that transition. 
and then we need to have the hover so sqs block image on hover the image element img and we're not using a period because it's the element it's not the class should then have that border radius of 500 pixels looking good Ooh, but it's also doing it when i've got a, um, a cropped image now what's quite interesting is if we look at the element here we can see that this has the fluid image container element and it's got all of this stuff here basically it's got a clip mask creating that shape if i look at a different one we'll see that the fluid image container i'm going to really simplify this here but fluid image container here it's just got the classes and the data animation role fluid image container down here where it's got the shape mask and everything we can see it's got a data shape mask property um, attribute it's also got all of this style stuff so what i do here is let's i'm going to do a third version of this code i'm just going to copy all of that and i'm going to say in fact no let's edit it let's let's keep things nice and dry i want to keep this i still want every image to do it but i don't want this to happen on images that have that clip mask so we need to add in a little bit extra here. We need to say that when you hover on a image block, if it doesn't have that data shape mask element, that's what I'm attribute rather, that's what I'm gonna target. So if it doesn't have a shape mask, it'll do the border radius thing. If it does have a shape mask, it's gonna ignore this. So I'm gonna use the uh, not pseudo selector and I'm going to put in brackets so colon not I've left the space because I don't want it to be on the like the the um, data attribute isn't on the SQS block image it's on a separate element um, and then the attribute we use square brackets and it was data shape mask I believe I'll have to double check that in a second no it wasn't data shape mark was it was it uh, data shape mask ah and I'm also going to target the element that, that that was on, which was the fluid image container. So it's saying when you hover an image block that spelled correctly has a fluid image container that doesn't have a data shape mask attribute, it'll apply this effect. Boom. So there's our completed code. All of our images as long as they don't have a shape mask, are going to have this transition. And you can do some fun things with the border radius, obviously. Uh, zero pick, like, let's just do all four of the colors. Uh, uh, 80 pixels. Yeah, and it'll make some funky shapes and things like that. We can do all sorts. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. But that covers image blocks. Now, what about the gallery blocks? Let's just do uh, gallery, not blocks, sorry, gallery sections. I'm not going to do gallery blocks today, but I'm sure you can take this logic and apply it. So we basically want to use this same CSS. In fact, we might as well just copy it here. And I'm just going to put a placeholder class here. It's going to be gallery, imi uh, gallery image element. I know that's not the actual... Um, name of the element, but I'm putting it there so you can see the structure. So we're going to target the gallery gallery image element, whatever it's called, we'll find out in a second. And the image within that, we're going to give it the same transition and we're going to give it the same border radius. So when I right click the image, here we go. This is great. Gallery grid item. So every item in this gallery grid, that's the, you know, the container for the overall image. And then we see within it, it has an image. So if I take that class and I replace here, and I replace here just before the hover. It should work. Let's check. Awesome. That was super easy. Um, one thing to be aware of as well, if we just look in a bit deeper. So if I put links here, there'd be an anchor element, an A, somewhere in here. So that's why I'm sort of targeting the, the outermost container for the image, which is, in this case, gallery grid item. And we can do all sorts of fun things here in a gallery. For example, we could do, um, I want every gallery grid item and in between 
just before the hover, but still attached to the, as part of the gallery good item, I'm going to do another colon and I'm going to say um, nth of type even. And it'll be border radius 500 pixels zero. So nothing's happening to first, one's an odd, two is an even. And then I could copy this and I could say odd. And let's flip that around. We can do all sorts of fun things. So anyway, that should sort of cover, that should give you a bit of a understanding of, of how you can create effects like this using image or gallery blocks. And you can apply the same knowledge. Essentially, the structure is, you know, uh, outer most container or image. And then on the image element, you put the transition. And then you do the same thing. And you just put in a hover effect, sorry, a hover state, which I can't spell today. And you put in the, the changes. That's, that's the structure. You target the element, the, the image within the element here, and you add a transition so it'll smooth it. And then you target the element in its hover state with the, uh, the image within that. And then you're pretty much golden. You can, as I say, you can do all sorts of fun things. If you wanted to put in filters, if you wanted to hide it, if you wanted to, you know, just as an easy one, transform, uh, translate, let's do Y, 50 pixels. It's going to be jumpy because I haven't, put, because I've only put the transition on the border radius, but really good structure, a really simple structure for um, adding effects to images. This nth child selector is great for galleries. And equally, if you want to respect these fantastic new uh, clip masks from Fluid Engine, then adding using this data attribute um, uh, with a not selector will help you out. I really hope this has helped you. Um, I hope you found it useful. I'm going to do the YouTube thing and say, hey, like and sub subscribe if, yeah. And feel free to send me a coffee if you want to make any requests or whatever. And yeah, have a great day.